Good afternoon, all, and welcome to Rec Talk. So, first order of business, uh, let's talk about some channel news. So, uh, as of last night, uh, when I looked at it, we were at 300 subs, and you guys are blowing right through that. Uh, when I started recording the video, we're at 359 subs and quickly approaching uh, 20,000 views. So we're at like 17 something right now. Uh, you guys are blowing me away. Thank you for all uh, the support for the channel. Uh, I never really saw this um, kind of moving this quickly. So um, if you do like the channel, uh, and I haven't said this before, please like and subscribe. Uh, that way other Georgia Tech fans can see this video. It gets pushed up in the algorithm. Uh, and if you're willing to do that, uh, go ahead and give us a follow on Twitter. Uh, I created a Twitter account yesterday. Uh, we'll drop news about new videos, uh, what's going on with Rec Talk there. And there's also an email. Um, if you have suggestions for the channel, things you would like to see, uh, you can either email me at rectalk at gmail.com or uh, you can tweet me as well. The, this is all new to me. I haven't tweeted before, uh, but I tweeted yesterday. So, uh, other, th other news. Um, working on an intro video, trying to get this thing looking a little bit more professional. Um, and I'm also looking at doing a weekly Rec Talk Tuesday show. So maybe a 45 minute to an hour show that we stream or go live on. And then maybe, I don't know if we have the channel support yet as far as like subscribers and people that watch it. We'll have to judge it. Maybe do a call-in show and see. We will certainly read uh, re uh read comments on that and, and go over them as well. Also looking at doing a discord group. Um, and because we're all rambling wrecks from Georgia tech and hells of an engineer, that didn't sound right. Anyway, a hell of an engineer. We're going to do a weekly rec talk math question. Uh, look for that at the end of the video. So, uh, first thing, I uh, wanted to say, because I always got mad love for my boys at Georgia Southern and Georgia State. Uh, Georgia State uh, didn't have a football program until recently. Bought the Turner Field Stadium. And I uh, have an all-sunbelt player in Jamari Thrasher. Uh, he's from Troop County. Uh, he led the Sun Belt with 1,122 yards receiving, 61 receptions, and uh, seven touchdowns. And they had uh, a few other all all conference players. So, uh, congratulations to all the Georgia State guys. Um, love to see that. Now, uh, SEC title game. Uh, Georgia will be playing LSU uh, this Saturday, and the SEC title game. Uh, and, it, and it's interesting because Kirby is one of three. He's one for three in uh, SEC title games. The, the big thing, though, is it doesn't really matter last year. They were still able to get uh, into the playoffs and ended up winning it all. So congratulations to all the Georgia fans that watch the show. Um, it seems like it's just teed up for you to crush this thing, right? Um, Jaden Daniels of LSU, um, is injured. Um, but Brian Kelly says he's likely to play. The thing is, I would say that whether he was likely to play or not, though, um, you know, always make your opponent prepare, give him as much to prepare for as possible. Um, we'll see. Georgia is 17, 17 and a half point favorites in this game. Um, and if you've been watching the channel, you know how I feel about sports betting. Um, I, I like, for me, it's like a personal game. I, I, I would never bet money, but it's interesting to see how you would do against the spread or whatever. Um, never bet on sports. And um, take my advice, if you are going to bet on sports, never ever bet on Georgia sports teams. Georgia Tech, Georgia, 
the Falcons, even Atlanta United. Don't bet on them either. Um, it's an interesting matchup. Everything tells me that Georgia should win this game and win big, most likely cover. Um, the problem with Georgia this year to me is they their offense has been suspect at times. Um, again, they, they blew us out, but um, – it, it's kind of interesting to me with the talent that Georgia has on offense that, I mean, multiple five stars that they've struggled in games this year. Kent State, Missouri um, could only score, you know, 10 points and a half against, you know, a very down Georgia Tech team. Um, I guess I, what I'm saying is it would be interesting to see uh, Georgia play a team that really pushes them, that has the offensive talent um, to really make every play on offense for Georgia count. You know, at the turnovers are really going to hurt. Uh, you're not just blowing the team out. So I don't know how I would bet that spread, though. Everything says, you know, Georgia should cover, especially if LSU um, – is without their starting quarterback. I don't know anything about the next in line for LSU. LSU dropped an ugly loss to Texas A&M, but Texas A&M is an interesting team. Texas A&M, to me, is a team, if you are a Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, you don't want to play Texas A&M. <laughs> you know, they've got the talent to run with you, and they don't have really anything to lose at the moment. Um. I don't know. If I was a betting man, I probably would take LSU uh, and all of those 17 and a half points. So, um, that being said, let me look at my notes here. Oh, um, and in, in these uh, SEC title games for Kirby, um, they're getting outscored 113 to 62. Also uh, an interesting stat. Alabama, when they had their offensive weapons last year, um, was able to boat race them out uh, of Atlanta, um, end up getting hurt. Uh, their top, like, two receivers, they didn't have uh, really a serviceable running back, um, just wasn't able to pull it together in the SEC title game. And that's not to take anything away from Georgia. Uh, Georgia was the best team in the country last year, and I think they're the best team in the country this year, uh, more than likely. But I'll take LSU in the points. So... Uh, ACC championship game. Clemson is a seven and a half point favorite in that game. Now this game doesn't, <laughs> I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. An ACC title always matters for your school. There's no playoff implications, um, in this, this will be the first year the ACC hasn't been represented in the college football playoffs. Um, if, if I'm a betting man on that, uh, I'm taking North Carolina in the, in those points as well. Um, this is going to come down to with as talk about a suspect offense. Uh, Clemson's offense, you know, they score what fifty something points against Wake and App State in these teams, um, and have really struggled recently. Uh, Uwe Ungalale. I know you're impressed that I pronounced that name correctly. Um, like I've said, Clemson does not sign quarterbacks that you can easily pronounce their last name. Um, 99 yards and like a touchdown and interception against South Carolina uh, last week. And how about the Gamecocks? I mean, go beat the brakes off Tennessee, still scoring points on Tennessee and Clemson. Spencer Radler throwing for like, is he thrown for like 11 touchdowns in the past two games he's played? Um, looking phenomenal. I just think that, and this is what's interesting because North Carolina's defense is so bad, but Clemson's offense has been really bad. And North Carolina's offense and Cade Mays have the potential to put up a lot of points. And for that reason... Not only would I take North Carolina in the points, 
I would probably take North Carolina in the money line on this game. I don't know what the money line is. I'd have to look it up. And if you're unfamiliar, the money line is, hey, I'm taking the team straight up. I think this team, I don't want to worry about the points. I want to pick the winner. Uh, and you most almost always bet an underdog in that game. Uh, if you bet a favorite, like you have to put up a thousand to get like 10 or something. If they win, it's just not worth it. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about was this article in the AJC today. Um, the article is titled X starter for O'Leary key now fills mentors job at tech. And it's really small text i had to do that to get it on the same page so if you see me squinting uh that's why uh, but it says around 1 p.m tuesday george o'leary got a call from one of his former players it was brent key reaching out uh, to the former georgia tech coach uh, with some personal news he said coach i'm the new head coach at georgia tech got chills just then uh, O'Leary shared his excitement with Key, who was a four-year starter and captain for O'Leary with the Yellow Jackets, and then spent 12 years working for him uh, on the staffs at Tech and Central Florida. O'Leary said that Key offered his former coach and boss his thanks. Uh, O'Leary says, now nah, you earned it, though, your work these past eight games. Now just don't let it go to waste. <laughs> um, and I think that's the sentiment uh, – for a lot of people at Georgia Tech, I think probably 90% of Tech fans are really excited about this hire, or that's what I've seen. Um, there's a few people that are staunch critics, especially one guy uh, in the comment section that likes to put his credentials in his YouTube uh, name, which is interesting to me. It, it makes me think of like The Office, like Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Uh, anyways, we'll see. Um, after going through Collins, though, I think we all have like this feeling in our gut that's just like, man, I can't do another three-win season. Like, this is, this is going to drive me to drinking again, right? Um, and then, interesting, his offensive line coach at Tech was Mac McWhorter. And I'm talking about Brent Key's offensive line coach was Mac uh, McWhorter. Um, he, his alma mater is Georgia. Uh, he is a Georgia uh, guy, but uh, this is what it says. McWhorter has remained close with Key over the years. Earlier this season, he called Key uh, what any parent would love to have as a son and was in communication with him as he guided the Jackets as the interim coach. He said, well, we've talked and taught, and they keep telling me just keep doing uh, my job. And, that's, and that was about it, McWhorter said. That was really... Uh, that was really intent. He was really intent on just working for tech. And I, I'll tell you what, that's great advice out f for any area of life um, you want to look at. Uh, generally speaking, if you just put your head down and do the next right thing in front of you, um, good things are going to happen. So, um, uh, following that, uh, before Tech's final game against Georgia, McWhorter's alma mater, uh, McWhorter's alma mater, he got a text from Key who wanted to know which team McWhorter was going to be rooting for in the game. McWhorter texted back and said, Brent Key. I'm rooting for Brent Key. Um, and that was the honest truth, says McWhorter. Um, it seems to me like everyone that's worked with this guy is very impressed with him. Again, this is a guy that's worked with George O'Leary for 12 years. Uh, it's worked for Nick Saban for three. Um, I haven't found anyone that has a bad thing to say about this guy other than people um, like myself who've never coached college football or, or football at any level. Um, I guess the, the, the criticism I see a lot is, well, the offensive line, uh, is like the worst in the country per SI. And again, it, it's easy to reduce people to numbers and stats. Now, these metrics are important, right? They do tell you a lot, but they don't tell you, uh, the whole story. 
if the whole culture of your program is broken, if you only have one upperclassman on your offensive line, if you've been plagued with injuries, and let's not forget switching in and out quarterbacks, is every sack the offensive line's fault? No. If I'm playing quarterback and I hold the ball for four seconds and the other team's blitzing and I don't get rid of the ball, is that the offensive line's fault? No. That's my fault for being an idiot quarterback and holding on to the ball and not getting rid of it. If anything, I need to throw it away, right? Let me step out of the pocket, throw the ball away, at least get it over uh, – across the line of scrimmage. So um, the other thing is when Key took over, he didn't have an offensive line coach. He had to promote a graduate assistant into that role. But I guess that that doesn't matter either. Anyway, um, when O'Leary watches teams play, and this is uh, really interesting, he looks for a few things. Do they play hard? Uh, do they play smart? Do they play together? Do they play with enthusiasm? Um, I saw that since Brent Key took over, O'Leary said. I saw that from the first minute to the last minute. They, I saw that from the first minute to the last minute. They need better players in some areas, obviously, but I think that why you hire a coach, that's why you hire a coach, to recruit and give him the opportunity to get the program right. I'm happy they've made that decision. O'Leary himself received the job at Tech after a three-game stint as the interim in 1994 in the place of Bill Lewis. I think that sometimes people look all over the place for the uh, – let me start over. I think that sometimes people look all over the place to try and get the right fit. And the fit sitting right in the same building that you're working in. Um, powerful stuff uh, said by O'Leary there. And I totally agree, right? You're Obviously, when you're looking for a head coach, we all want the biggest name to come to our school that's a proven winner. Um, the issue is getting him, right? Um, and this is the other thing with Key. It's not like we fired Collins at the end of last year and then hired Key. First of all, we would not have hired Key if we had fired Collins at the end of last year. Uh and we probably would have lost key. I don't know. But um, it's kind of a perfect storm of how it's played out. You know, I there's not a bigger critic of, of Jeff Collins and the way he ran the program than me. Um, as far as I'm concerned, moving on now, support Brent. Um, but I'm kind of glad we held on to him uh, because without – letting Jeff Collins start the season this year as our head coach, uh, I don't think there's any path uh, to hiring uh, Brent Key. Um, So, yeah, interesting stuff in the AJC. Um, I do hate that you need a subscription. I just got a subscription to the AJC just because there's a lot of news uh, coming about – but de- definitely an interesting read. Uh, read the whole article. It's very, uh, very, very interesting. So, uh, in other news, um, and, and I will make a, a video solely addressing this later. I think I'd like to wait into the off season. I've got to look at what we're going to do uh, with the channel and videos in the off season. Um, but. Th- it is confirmed 2024 and 2025 seasons. Uh, we are expanding to a 12-team playoff, uh, which is a Tech fan, I'm ecstatic, right? There's some path um, for Georgia Tech to make the playoffs potentially in the next, you know, three, four, five years. Um, particularly since the ACC is so weak, Um you know, it's Clemson and North Carolina. Can you even really say they're the best teams uh, in the ACC? 
I think Florida State, even though they got beat by Clemson, is probably a better team right now. Um, NC State, you know, who beat North Carolina uh, the last game of the season, um, I, I think they might be better than – they might be – I'd like to see them play more in the in the championship game than maybe either one of the teams. But, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of interesting things going on with that. So, with that being said, the weekly rec talk math question for all my engineers, math and suit enthusiasts. I um, studied physics at North Georgia before I went to Tech. Uh, physics enthusiast, here is the question, and I'll tell you, uh, who, the first person to comment with what the name of the problem is, it is a famous problem, and um, the answer, and why, right? Um, I will pin at the top of the comments and give you a shout-out in the next video. The problem is, uh, suppose you're in a game show. There's three doors. Two doors lose. One door is a winner. So I say, all right, pick one of the three doors. Rem remember only one wins you this game. You pick door two. And I say, okay. And I remove one of the doors. And the door I remove is guaranteed to be a loser. So I know what the winner is. I remove one of the losing doors that you didn't pick. And now I ask you, do you want to switch your choice? So recapping, three doors, one's a winner. You choose one. I remove one wrong answer and ask if you would like to switch. The question is, should you switch your answer? I asked this at the last job I worked at, and people got like red in the face angry, uh, arguing over should you choose to switch your choice or not. So comment what you think. Also, suggestions. What do you want to see in the channel? What would you like to see? What would you like to see covered? Is there anything I'm not doing you would like to see me do? Um, I'm new to this, all right? Uh, I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, but thank you for watching the video. Again, like and subscribe if you enjoy it. Um, and tell your friends about it. Uh, tell them to like and subscribe, particularly if they're tech fans, uh, to get their, their tech news here. So, we'll talk to you all later.